Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cardiovascular Education Channel. My name is Dr. Aurangzeb and today I am going to discuss a very interesting and intriguing topic that is switching platelet P to Y12 receptor inhibitor therapies. The reason I chose this topic is because that increased number of patients are being treated with dual antiplatelet therapy for indications like acute coronary syndrome and patients who have undergone PCI. Yet while the patient is on dual antiplatelet therapy, different clinical scenarios might arise which might compel you to switch the different agents. I will try to make this topic simple because it's a bit complicated so that it is uh, easy for you to understand not only for your board purposes for your academics but also uh, will help you to easily treat your patients with whom you came across in your day-to-day -day practice. Let's begin our topic. Before proceeding, I will request you to please uh, subscribe to my channel. If you have any queries, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box and we will try to answer uh, them. This is the outline of my today's presentation. I will go through briefly introducing the concept of dual interpreted therapy, what are the pharmacological properties of the various agents used, what are the different switching modalities, some important definitions, expert consensus on switching, some special considerations and clinical scenarios, and take home points. We begin uh, our discussion with the introduction of dual antiplatelet therapy. Aspirin in combination with P2Y12 receptor antagonists is referred to as dual antiplatelet therapy and it is used in patients who have an acute coronary syndrome and patients who have undergone PCI to reduce the various atherothrombotic adverse events. The P2Y12 receptor antagonists include clopidogrel, which is the only agent used in stable ischemic heart disease patients, ticagrelor, prasugrel, and the intravenous agent cangrelor. From the guidelines, we also know that Ticagrelor and Prasugrel are the preferred agents over Clopidogrel in acute coronary syndromes. You might come across different clinical scenarios that require switching. The availability of different oral P2Y12 inhibitors has enabled physicians to contemplate switching among therapies because of specific clinical scenarios. The recent introduction of an intravenous P2Y12 inhibitor, Cangrelor, further adds to the multitude of modalities and settings in which switching therapies may occur. Some of the factors contributing to switching Clinical settings, which we will be discussing further in a bit detail. Patient characteristics, for example, elderly patients, uh, patients who have low body mass index, or concomitant therapies like oral anticoagulant therapies, cost issues and some of the financial uh, aspects of uh, prosegrel and ticagrelor, social issues and medication side effects. But an important question arises is that whether switching between the various agents safe or not. Unfortunately, the guidelines do not give any clear answer to this question. In other words, at present, data from large-scale clinical studies to guide the optimal approach to switching P2Y12 inhibitors are limited, and most data are derived from pharmacodynamic studies. In turn, practice guidelines have not fully elaborated on how to switch therapies, leaving clinicians with limited guidance on when and how to switch therapies when needed, which prompted the development of this expert consensus uh, document which I am using as a reference for my lecture today. Coming to the pharmacological properties, different agents have different pharmacological properties and concerns surrounding the safety of switching between P2Y12 inhibitors have emerged because of the potential for drug-drug interactions. Drug-drug interactions are defined as modifications in the effect of a drug when administered with another drug. Uh, 
This may lead to a decrease or increase in the effect of the drug. And DDIs depends on some key pharmacological properties in turn. The effects of a P2Y12 inhibitors can be decreased, leading to inadequate platelet inhibition and increasing the risk of thrombotic complications. Alternatively, there may be potential for overdosing as a result of an overlapping drug therapy that could lead to excessive platelet inhibition and predispose to bleeding complications. Here are the important pharmacological properties of P2Y12 receptor inhibitors. This table shows the different pharmacological properties of the four available agents clopidogrel, prasugrel, ticagrelor and cangrelor. Starting from the mechanism of action, first we will discuss clopidogrel. So it is an irreversible receptor uh, inhibitor. It has a prodrug. Half-life of the parent drug is 6 hours and half-life of the active metabolite is 30 minutes. Binding site is ADP binding site. It is administered orally in a single OD dose. The onset of action is 2 to 8 hours and the offset of action is 5 to 10 days. And it has cytochrome P450 drug interactions. Regarding prosopril, it is also an irreversible uh, receptor inhibitor. It has a prodrug and the half-life of the parent drug is less than 5 minutes. Its distribution half-life is 30 to 60 minutes and elimination half-life is 2 to 15 hours. It also binds to the ADP binding site. It is administered orally in an OD dose fashion with an onset of action uh, ranging between 30 minutes to 4 hours and offset of action 7 to 10 days. It has no cytochrome P450 drug interactions. With regards to ticagrelor, it is a reversible um, inhibitor. It has no prodrug. The half-life of the parent drug is 6 to 12 hours. The elimination half-life of this drug is 8 to 12 hours. And it has an allosteric binding site. Uh, it's, it, it is administered orally in a BD dose fashion with an onset of action 30 minutes to 4 hours, offset of action 3 to 5 days, and it has CYP drug interactions. Cangrelor is also a reversible uh, receptor inhibitor. It has no prodrug as it is given intravenously. The half-life of the parent drug is just 3 to 6 minutes. The active metabolized half-life is not available and the binding site is undetermined. It is administered intravenously. Uh, the frequency is continuous infusion and the off onset of action is approximately 2 minutes and the offset of action is 60 minutes and it has no cytochrome P450 drug interactions. Clopidogrel is second generation P2Y12 receptor antagonist and prosogrel is third generation P2Y12 receptor antagonist. The other thing is that the active metabolite of clopidogrel is highly unstable and it's an half -life, it has a half-life of 30 minutes. On the other hand, the active metabolite of prosogrel is comparatively stable and uh, that's why the effect of prosogril is uh, can last up to 7 to 10 days while that of clopidogril might last 5 to 10 days. Here is an illustration of the mechanism of action of the different uh, P2Y12 receptor antagonists. Prosogril and clopidogril are prodrugs while ticagrelor and cangrelor have a direct action on the P2Y12 receptors. The resulting inhibition of these receptors leads to the cascade of uh, events which I'm not going into the details no. but the ultimate uh, result is platelet that are activated is being blocked as a result of uh, the, the blockage of these receptors. Some of the switching modalities and what are the important definitions uh, that you should be familiar with. Switching can occur between the oral agents and between the oral agents and the intravenous agent. The timing of switching with respect to the index event that led to the initiation of P2Y12 inhibitor therapy may also vary. Switching may cause drug-drug interactions between the two overlapped drugs. Switching is classified as acute within the first 24 hours of the initiation of the P2Y12 receptor antagonist. Early, that is between uh, after the first day and within one month, 
late that is after the first month and before completion of the first year and very late that is beyond one year so first we will be discussing switching between oral agents Prosecrel and ticagrelar are characterized by enhanced pharmacodynamic effects compared with clopidogrel and uh, therefore switching between oral P to Y12 inhibitors may result in a variation from a less intensive to a more intensive agent that is clopidogrel to prosagrel or ticagrelar or vice versa from more intensive to a less intensive agent that is prosagrel or ticagrelar to clopidogrel. These modalities of switching are defined as escalation and de-escalation uh, respectively. Literature uh, data um, comparing the pharmacodynamic effects of prosagril versus ticagrelor have yielded some inconsistent findings. So the overall levels of P2Y12 inhibitors are mildly reduced and not that uh, dissimilar between these agents. Uh, switching between prosagril and ticagrelor is referred to as change. Such terminology that is escalation or de-escalation and change should be considered only when referring to the pharmacodynamic effects associated with switching and should not imply any clinical correlate that is efficacy or safety. That is uh, known to you that prosogril and ticagrelor have enhanced pharmacodynamics compared to clopidogrel and that's why switching may result in variations from a less intensive to a more intensive effect or vice versa. There are two different classes of P2Y12 inhibitors that are thionopyridines and cyclopentyl thiazolopyrimidine. This is, these are the two different classes and if these are switched this is referred to as interclass switch and this may also result in drug-drug interactions. Uh, generally escalation is not associated with drug-drug interactions but can be associated with this de-escalation particularly when ticagrelar is replaced with clopidogrel. Okay, so what is escalation? Escalation is switching from clopidogrel to ticagrelar or prosogrel. That is you are switching from a less potent to a more potent agent. This is an example of interclass switch and generally it is thought that it, this type of switch has no drug-drug interactions. When coming to uh, de-escalation, this is uh, referred to as switching from prosogril or ticagrelar to clopidogrel and it's another example of interclass switch uh, which has potential drug-drug uh, interactions, particularly if switched from ticagrelar to clopidogrel. And change is referred to as switching between prosogril and ticagrelar. It's another example of a switch uh, and it has potential for drug-drug interaction, particularly if ticagrelar is switched to, to prosogril. So always keep in mind that switching from a less potent to a more potent drug will not result in drug-drug interactions. Coming to the switching between oral and intravenous agents, bridge is defined as switching from either oral agents to cangrelar. And it's an example of interclass switch with no potential for drug-drug interaction. And transition, on contrary to bridge, is referred to as when cangrelar is switched with any of the oral agents and it has potential for drug-drug interactions, particularly when ticagrelar is switched to cangrelar. Escalation, that is switching from clopidogrel to ticagrelar or prosogril. Trials have consistently shown enhanced platelet inhibition with escalation and these effects are achieved more promptly after giving loading dose compared with a maintenance dose. When is escalation required? Acute coronary syndrome patients planned for PCI already pretreated with clopidogrel, patient transferred to PCI capable hospital, occurrence of acute coronary syndrome while the patient is on clopidogrel, ST elevation MI, in hospital reinfarction, younger patients, patients who have higher BMI and high risk angiographic characteristics. Some of the trials that I will recommend you to look at are the swap and the respond trials. And uh, this is again uh, the placebo loading dose plus clopidogrel and placebo loading dose plus prosogrel and prosogrel 60 mg loading dose plus 10 mg maintenance dose comparison. Uh, 
and uh, it is compared to with the maximum platelet aggregation. De-escalation is switching from prostaglandin ticagrelor to clopidogrel. When it is done, sometimes the cost associated with generic clopidogrel is less compared to that of ticagrelor and prostaglandin, so that's one of the reasons. Potentials for increased bleeding risk with ticagrelor and prostaglandin over a period of time, particularly if they are used for more than one year. And uh, the other indication might be dyspnea with ticagrelor. If a patient has a stroke or transient ischemic attack, patient who are, have a BMI or a body mass index of uh, uh, low body mass index and a weight less than 60 kg, uh, these patients are generally de-escalated. Uh, or if they have contraindication in the first place. When it is done, that's uh, already we have mentioned, that is in older patients, patients with low BMI, patients who have a transit ischemic attack or had an ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke, in hospital cabbage, patients who have in hospital atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, and patients who are on oral anticoagulant therapies. Topic trial uh, which showed that de-escalation after one month from an acute coronary syndrome when the patient is event free leads to reduced bleeding complications. So that is what one of the uh, <coughs> uh, evidence in favor of de-escalation. Change that is switching between prostaglandin and ticagrelor. Why it is done? Uh, one thing is that ticagrelor is given in a 90 or 60 milligram BD dose while prostaglandin is given in an OD dose. So that's one of the advantage that we want to take uh, exploit uh, that advantage we want to use it. And uh, the other is that uh, if you want on the other hand the patient is on ticagrelor and uh, he develops ticagrelor associated dyspnea so we will uh, definitely try to switch that uh, change ticagrelor with uh, prosopril and if the patient has some contraindications to the use of prosopril. The evidence is from SWAP2 and SWAP3 trials. Bridging is uh, basically changing or switching from oral agents to cangrelar and uh, the evidence comes from the bridge trial which, in which patients on thionopyridines undergoing cardiac surgery Bridging with the cangrelor uh, resulted in more sustained platelet inhibition and there was no drug-drug interactions with this approach. The expert consensus recommendation on switching. In line with the limited safety and efficacy data in this field, these recommendations are to be considered mostly consensus-based rather than evidence-based. In general, switching approaches uh, that have shown to be associated with the DDIs should be avoided or minimized unless clinically necessary. The provided recommendations are to be considered as guidance for the practicing clinician who may consider alternative approaches based on clinical context of the patient. The considerations made here are proposed under the assumption that these patients are also for the most part treated with concomitant low dose aspirin in line with the guidelines recommendation. So escalation in the acute or early phase is done with the use of a loading dose of ticagrelor or prosagril. That is within the first month if a patient needs escalation you should give a loading dose of ticagrelor or prosagril followed by a maintenance dose. Irrespective of the timing and dosing of clopidogrel however uh, it should be kept in mind that the dose should be given at least 24 hours after the uh, last maintenance dose of clopidogrel. If you have to do escalation during the late and very late phase that is beyond the first month, uh, just use the maintenance dose, no need for uh, loading dose in that case. And this is done 24 hours after the last dose of clopidogrel. Escalation from clopidogrel to prosogril or ticagrelor in the early, particularly acute phase of treatment should occur with the use of a 60 or 180 milligram loading dose respectively, that's one point. Uh, 
an administration of an ld regime that is loading dose regime may occur regardless of the timing of the last dose of clopidogrel however uh, 24 hours from the last dose of clopidogrel uh, is generally considered a safe period to avoid any bleeding complications Recommendations are mostly consensus-based rather than evidence-based and patients are assumed to be on low-dose aspirin therapy. De-escalation is done uh, again if the patient present uh, requires de-escalation during the acute and early phases of their uh, primary condition. Loading dose of clopidogrel 24 hours after the last maintenance dose of ticagrelor or prosegrel. And with prosegrel, we can de-escalate without a maintenance dose as well. So, if the patient uh, is de-escalated with ticagrelor, the patient can have uh, a loading dose. While, on the other hand, if the patient is de-escalated while on prosegrel, we can uh, even de-escalate with a maintenance dose as well. Beyond the uh, acute and early phases, during the late and very late phase, Maintain dose of clopidogrel at the time of the next scheduled dose of prosegrel and for ticagrelor use a loading dose of clopidogrel 24 hours after the last maintenance dose. If the reason behind de-escalation is bleeding, avoid use of loading dose if possible and start with a maintenance dose of clopidogrel instead. Change Use loading dose prosegrel if you are switching from ticagrelor regardless of uh, the phase whether it's acute, early or late. A waiting uh, period of 24 hours should be observed. In general, during the acute phase, switching with a loading dose might be reasonable 24 hours after the last dose, while during the late phase, switching with a maintenance dose 24 hours after the last dose may be reasonable. So you can switch with a loading dose if the patient requires change during the first 24 hours, and beyond 24 hours, just uh, switch with a maintenance dose don't give a loading dose. So this is the switching between oral P2Y12 receptor inhibitors. This is the acute phase that is the first 24 hours or beyond the first day to the first month and uh, we can see that if you uh, need escalation with prosegrel from clopidogrel uh, then give a prosegrel loading dose irrespective of the timing and dosing of clopidogrel and uh, if you have to de-escalate from prosegrel then you have to give a loading dose of clopidogrel 24 hours of the last prosegrel dose if you have to escalate from clopidogrel to ticagrelor give ticagrelor's loading dose of 180 milligram irrespective of timing and dosing of clopidogrel on the other hand, if you have to de-escalate from ticagrelor to clopidogrel during the acute phase, you should be giving loading dose clopidogrel 600 mg 24 hours after the last ticagrelor dose. In contrary, we can see that uh, the change between the two agents, ticagrelor and prosegrel during the acute phase happens with the loading dose 24 hours after the last uh, dose of either agent. During the late and very late phases, if you have to escalate from clopidogrel to prosegrel, uh, just give 10 mg maintenance dose 24 hours after the last clopidogrel dose. On the other hand, during the late phase, if you have to de-escalate from prosegrel to clopidogrel, give clopidogrel 75 mg maintenance dose 24 hours after the last prosegrel dose. On the other hand, if you have to escalate from clopidogrel to ticagrelor, you have to give uh, ticagrelor 90 mg BID maintenance dose 24 hours after the last clopidogrel dose. And you have, if you have to de-escalate from ticagrelor to clopidogrel, give clopidogrel 600 mg loading dose 24 hours after the last mm, ticagrelor dose. And during the late, very late phases, if you have to change between ticagrelor and prosegrel, you have to do this with a maintenance dose is given if you are uh, switching uh, between prosegrel and ticagrelor. And if the change is from ticagrelor to prosegrel, give prosegrel loading dose 24 hours after the last ticagrelor dose. We already discussed.
So a waiting period should be observed after discontinu discontinuation of the oral agents. Three to four days for prosagril and two to three days for ticagrelor and clopidogrel to minimize the duration of cangrelar infusion. Transition. Cangrelar infusion is started before PCI and continued for at least two hours or till the completion of the procedure, whichever is longer for up to four hours. Four hours infusion in patients treated with primary PCI or have received opiates. If thionopyridines are to be administered, use a loading dose at the time when cangrelar infusion is discontinued. FDA states that ticagrelar can be given before, during, or after the infusion of cangrelar. Early administration of ticagrelar might be considered. Consensus recommendations on switching between oral and intravenous P2Y12 inhibitors. Coming to this part, the A part, that is bridging from oral to intravenous agents. Uh, for both cardiac and non-cardiac surgery, if withdrawal of P2Y12 uh, inhibiting therapies is required, prosopril is stopped 7 days, clopidogrel and ticagrelar are stopped 5 days, cangrelar is start, uh, started at uh, 3 days and it is stopped approximately 1 to 6 hours before the procedure, cangrelar is reinitiated and uh, follow up until discharge. It is reasonable to start cangrelar bridging up to three to four days after prosopril discontinuation and two to three days of uh, clopidogrel and ticagrelar discontinuation. Okay, so this should be clear to you now. Uh, we uh, are giving cangrelar to the patient at a dose of 30 mics per kg bolus and uh, four mics per kg per minute infusion. Clopidogrel is uh, administered in a loading dose of 600 mg immediately after discontinuation of the cangrelar infusion. Prosagril, on the other hand, uh, is administered immediately uh, after discontinuation of cangrelar in a loading dose of 60 mg and ticagrelar uh, 180 mg at start of cangrelar infusion up to uh, immediately uh, after discontinuation. Few points that you need to remember. When to stop prosagril, when to stop clopidogrel and ticagrelar, when to resume uh, IV cangrelar, uh, and when to stop uh, cangrelar before surgery and then to resume it, and when to reinitiate the oral agents. So the transition and bridging uh, is uh, quite well summarized in this particular slide. Coming to some special considerations. First, we will be discussing patients undergoing cardiac and non-cardiac surgery. Acute coronary syndrome patients undergoing cabbage, unless recent PCI was done, stop P2Y12 receptor uh, inhibiting therapies pre-op and restart post-op, as we already discussed in the previous slide. Clopidogrel and ticagrelar are stopped 5 days and prosagril is stopped 7 days before surgery. If bridging with cangrelar is intended, wait three to four days after discontinuation of prosagril and two to three days after ticagrelar or clopidogrel discontinuation. Postoperatively, clopidogrel is started with a loading dose as soon as the bleeding risks allow. And prosagril and ticagrelar administration should be discouraged in the early post-op period after major non-cardiac surgery. Post-op bridging with an intravenous agent should be considered if clopidogrel per oral is not possible. Second, patients with bleeding or high risk for bleeding complications. Patients on dual endoplatelet therapy who develop a bleeding complications might be de-escalated. Also, patients who are at high risk of developing bleeding complications such as patients who develop thrombocytopenia or cerebrovascular events or who are elderly. In this case, a 75 mg maintenance dose of clopidogrel might be started. A 300 mg loading dose of clopidogrel should be given if there is a gap of at least five days. Patients who received thrombolytics. If dual endoplatelet therapy is indicated after thrombolytics, 
Clopidogrel is the agent of choice as per the guidelines. Escalation should not be attempted within at least the first 24 hours because of an increased risk of bleeding. Beyond 24 hours, escalation should precede a loading dose of ticagrelor or prosegrel. Patients on oral anticoagulants. If a patient who is on oral anticoagulant and is undergoing PCI, clopidogrel is the P2Y12 receptor inhibitor of choice. De-escalation is recommended when the patient uh, who are post-PCI on potent agents now develops atrial fibrillation that requires oral anticoagulant. And a clopidogrel maintenance dose of 75 mg is generally considered safe in these patients. In P2Y12 inhibitors, naive patients, patients with atrial fibrillation and oral anticoagulants start with 600 mg loading dose of clopidogrel. So this is the difference between the two groups. In uh, naive patients, give a loading dose and uh, on the other hand, if the patient had uh, some sort of uh, increased risk for bleeding or AF or things like that, just proceed with a maintenance dose. Patients undergoing very late switch, that is beyond one year. De-escalation should occur with a maintenance dose. Ticagrelor 60 mg BD for post-MI patients after one year of index event. A switch should be made to 60 mg BD maintenance do dose without a loading dose. If a patient presents with unknown medications, uh, sometimes patients present to us uh, that they are taking medications but they don't know what medications. Uh, they should be treated as naive patients and a loading dose should be used. So I guess we are coming to the end of our topic and uh, some of the important uh, take home points. There are specific indications for the available P2Y12 receptor inhibitors. We know that clopidogrel can be used even in ACS, uh, apart from ACS patient in stable ischemic heart disease patients as well. Clopidogrel and prosegrel are indicated uh, in specifically in acute coronary syndrome patients and are preferred over clopidogrel. And uh, clinical uh, circumstances may arise that require switching. We already discussed in detail. Robust data is lacking on specific switching strategies. So uh, many factors should be kept in mind, such as the pharmacodynamics and different agents. So of the different agents so that drug-drug uh, interactions are avoided, which uh, is the main reason and a focus of concern when we uh, are switching these therapies. Recommendations here are derived from pharmacodynamic and registry data and in, uh, integrated with an understanding of the pharmacologic uh, principles of the agents involved. Thank you for your attention.